Hey everyone, welcome to Do It While You're Young. I'm Brett, and today we're talking with authors and world travelers Betsy and Warren Talbot. Betsy and Warren teach people how to create the life they want from the life they already have. After experiencing a wake-up call at age 37 that life is short, they set about creating the lifestyle they really wanted, which was one of world travel. Over the next two years, they systematically shed themselves of all their possessions and saved enough money to travel for five years. Along the way, they developed a cult following on their website, marriedwithluggage.com. Here's what you're going to get out of watching the interview. You'll hear the specific steps they took to shed their belongings to pursue a life of travel. You'll hear the marketing and PR skills they're using to promote their latest book, Dream Save Do, an action plan for dreamers. And you'll gain valuable insight into how they research and survey to figure out what their audience and customers want. Be sure to check out their latest book, Dream Save Do. You can buy it today from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or iTunes. Thanks for taking the time to, to uh, speak with Do It While You're Young. I want to start by learning a little bit about your backgrounds. How did you get started in the online world? The online world's a long time back for me. Um, you know, I started I started my first company in '99. Uh, it was an online um, solution. We raised VC money and with a focus specifically on selling applications online. So uh, essentially, ten years before Google did it, uh, you know, before they started uh, Google Docs, we were selling applications and hosting them on the internet. Uh, wow, I started out as one of the first telecommuters. I worked for a healthcare technology company, and in 1999, I started working from home on a dial up connection. Probably half the people listening to this don't even know what a dial up connection is. I do. I still remember. Yeah. <laughs> But that's how I started working online. So yeah, it definitely changed our lives. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, sure. And and take me through a little bit about that that change. So as you transition from, you know, raising VC, VC money, running a business, working in a business, to what you're doing online now with with your uh, self publishing company, how did that transition happen? Ooh, yeah, that's a that's a long uh, and wonderful story. Mm-hmm. Well, that's like a ten year story, and I think sure. like most people, we use the internet to further our careers. Yeah, uh, and so the the business for me began, and it got me into a whole new world of um, what back end um, functionality was like in serving up the internet. It mm-hmm. then took me into a whole different level of technology. Um, got me engaged with Microsoft, where I worked for the last several years before we decided to take off um, on this trip that we've been on for now two and a half years. Yeah. For me, it ended up uh, growing my career. I was able to get um, a corporate job after working you know, uh, remotely for a while. And eventually, I left the company and started my own consulting business for women-owned businesses. So I, mine just gradually rose me up the corporate ladder, and then I sort of leaped off. Yeah. <laughs> I think that both of us were, you know, they, yeah, we both became comfortable with an online world. And right. And that was the most important thing. We understood how it worked. We understood the possibilities. And I think that was what helped us by being involved for so long. Sure. What What was it? Was there any particular catalyst that said, like, now is the time to basically forget the corporate world and, and start this on our own? Yes, there was a big catalyst. Uh, the first catalyst was that my 35-year-old brother had a heart attack. Mm, wow. The second catalyst was that our 34-year-old friend had a brain aneurysm. And this all happened within a year of each other. And... We had been working really hard to build up, to build up, to be all these things. And we just looked at each other one day and said, what if we didn't make it to our next birthday? How would we change our lives? And that became the impetus to start traveling. And uh, as we created this life for ourselves, people kept asking, "How, how did you do this? Yeah, so it really was a process that from the moment we decided to do it, it took us two years to put everything in place because we were... We were stepping off the uh, into the, what felt like the abyss at the time. You know, we didn't know anybody who was doing anything like this. We weren't aware of any um, uh, that it was even a thing. You know, this idea of digital nomad wasn't even a term we had heard of. Mm-hmm. So we began just by researching and starting to understand what was possible. And the original intention was just to go off and to travel, to follow our passion of travel for five years. Yeah, there was no just, business, no at business all plan at all, oh, wow. and so okay. just to go see the world. Um, and we saved enough, and so we spent a lot of time and energy to save um, and kind of document, or not really document, but start to put in place a plan of what it will take to get it done. 
after about a year of travel, we realized that um, we were getting a lot of questions from people of how did you do that? Mm -hmm. And that's when we started documenting and going back as to how we had done it. And that became our first book, which is Dream, Save, Do. But I, but I will point out that the, the really smart thing we did along the way that we didn't know was super smart at the time was we started a website the day after we made the decision to travel. So mm -hmm. for two years, we documented yeah. our ups and our downs and the things that worked and the things that didn't. And then we continued documenting after we started traveling. So we were gathering an audience all along before we actually knew that we needed an audience to serve. Right. So, so we took care of the audience before we had a product. Yeah. Sure. Oh, very smart. And and so common too, as far as I, I run into a lot of travel bloggers who really got their start, maybe right out of college, they decided they're going to travel for a year and they thought, well, what's the best way to keep in contact with my family, my friends? Right. And they just throw something online and it ends up growing into something that they've got, you know, three, four, 10,000 uh, unique visitors every month, which mm -hmm. is, is right. awesome that they grow that audience just kind of organically. And it sounds like that's that's basically how you guys did it too. Right. Yeah. yeah, ours began organically and then, you know, we started tapping into what they needed sure. and then responding and creating products that um, specifically right. uh, focus on that market. Okay. And so take me through that year, year and a half of planning. Uh, what were the concrete steps? And imagine that there's someone watching this here, which I'm, I'm sure there is, who is in that position right now. They decide, you know, corporate world isn't for me or they experience some kind of life tragedy or catalyst similar to, to what you guys did. What were the con concrete steps that you took that someone else can follow that path? Uh, the first thing we did was set a deadline. Okay. Yeah, and we did that the next morning. So we had made the decision um, on September 1st, 2008. And the next morning, we picked what day we were going to leave. And we mm -hmm. started defining a budget. So we started saying, how much do we think this will cost? We didn't worry too much about getting it right. We right. worried about putting a number out there that we could start to hone in on. And that was really step number one, mm -hmm. uh, day number one. Right. I think it's really important to get started with action right away because the more you think about it, the more you, you think you're doing something because your mind is occupied with it, but you're not actually taking any action and you're not moving any closer. So it's better to take action and then spend all your time thinking about it if you want to, but you've mm -hmm. got to continue taking steps. Definitely. Right. And then next we started, um, you know, pro defining something that would keep us motivated. We had two years to go until we were going to leave on our trip. So we needed a way to keep us motivated. So we created what we called our dream porn. And that was, uh, you know, for us, it, it was very exciting. You know, honestly, if you guys want to see it. <laughs> it was a big map in the um, base and basically on the first floor of our um, of our townhouse. And it had all the places that we wanted to go. And we had to see that every day. Mm -hmm. And that was the really important to us because mm -hmm. it became the thing that motivated us on those challenging days. Right, sure. right. And, you know, people can use any kind of reminder like that. But it's really important to have some kind of uh, sensual reminder, whether it's visual or... or a song that you song play every single or, day. But it needs to be the motivation factor. Right, because mm -hmm. your, your, your enthusiasm will wane. Yeah. And so, and then beyond that, we took um, really a lot of time to build out um, budgets, two sides of it. First mm -hmm. is how much we spent, um, how much we were spending, how, where we could cut in order to save the money we needed for this um, new adventure we were going to go on. And the other was how much was our dream going to cost? Mm -hmm. And so we tackled the dream cost first. We spent time to hone down that number to get it to um, a specificity with which we could work. And that became our target. Um, and then we started cutting expenses. Yeah, yeah. You know, basic budget stuff. You can't get sure. around the hard work of it. No. <laughs> yeah. And so we built a um, a specific line item to budget that said, here's how much we spend on everything in our life today. Um, and it turned out that we were spending an obscene amount eating obscene. out. Obscene. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, just going out, you go out and you have a dinner and a, and a drink and um, suddenly before you know it, you spend $100. Yeah. And that that's a lot of money and it adds up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so we said, okay, we can cut there. We can cut out TV. We don't really need cable anymore. We can drop a cell phone. We can sell a car. I mean, it, it became where, you know, we were asking ourselves every day what became our phrase to save, which is, would we rather have, you know, cable TV or another day on the road? Mm -hmm. That was um, how we started motivating ourselves. I think that's a really good tip for people who are saving for something is to not think about that huge big number because mm -hmm. it's it's just overwhelming and you can't relate to it, whether it's $10,000 or $100,000. Um, but if you have it to a small 
number that you can focus on that like for us it was a day on the road we had a budget this is how much it cost us per day to travel mm -hmm. and so we could easily imagine that one day and so if we saved a little bit of money we thought oh that's another day on the road or that's another half day on the road mm -hmm. whereas if we had just thought about the big number it would have just been too abstract yeah I think the last tip would be to make sure that um, at least what it worked for us and we think it would work for anyone with a dream is to identify people that will support you. Mm -hmm. it, is a, uh, it is challenging to step off of the, the, the common path or the mm -hmm. career ladder. It is weird and you will be viewed as weird. So you quickly need to identify people, maybe it's friends, maybe it's family, maybe it's people you don't know. Um, make, reach out in the online community, find them and make sure that you start sharing your dream with them and list them actively and list them as supporters. Right, right. That's great advice. I love making the abstract concrete. And I love yeah, how yeah. you did it by a, a day by day. This is how much it costs to travel. Yeah. That's great advice. You have a book, Getting Rid of It, um, Eliminating Clutter in Your Life. I was wondering, what was the most difficult thing to get get rid of? Ooh. We got rid of um, we got rid of everything we owned. So mm -hmm. that just to kind of give you a little bit of the premise uh, for those the readers that haven't read it yet, um, you should. By the way, everyone should read it. <laughs> you just blew the ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was. Um, but uh, for me, I didn't have any problem. I you'll find out quickly that I have no uh, attachment to physical things. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of problems, a <laughs> lot of problems. And well, I think the way we did it though was good. Um, instead of waiting until a month before we left or six weeks to get rid of everything, we started right away. And part of it is good from an emotional standpoint because I had to get used to the idea of getting rid of things. And so we started with easy stuff like junk in the garage. I don't even know what's in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and selling a little bit of that at a time, and then I start seeing the money come in and think, ooh, that's a day on the road. Yeah. Oh, that's a half a day on the road. And those kind of things kind of reinforce that it's a good thing for you. But uh, after, as time went by, you know, you get down to the really nitty gritty, the stuff that you really love that you have to get, you know, get rid of. And yeah, you came up with a really creative way, though, of how you got rid of it, because you had some, um, some items that were... Um, personal to you. That's true. I This is a, actually a really fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. um, I had purses, silk scarves, hats, leather jackets, things that I got on my travels or that were gifts from people that, um, anyway, they, sig they signified big things in my life. Sure. And I thought, how am I going to sell this on Craigslist to strangers? And ew. So when my 39th birthday rolled around, I had a reverse birthday party and I put out 39 of my favorite things. I put a little tag on each one saying why it was so special to me. And I invited my friends to come over and shop my closet. Mm -hmm. um, they came over and um, they just donated to our trip fund instead of buying a gift and they took away all my things. And now I know that all the things that I loved went with people that I love. Sure. So it made, it, it made giving them up a lot easier. Wow. What a great idea. I'm going to have to use that. Um, <laughs> uh, trademark, married with luggage. <laughs> our, our garage is pretty scary, actually, right now, too. So that's where I would definitely start. Uh, my wife, yeah, I don't know. She she says I need to spend more time out there getting rid of some of that stuff. So maybe this spring when it gets a little warm outside. Uh, tell me a little bit about your, your uh, new book that you just – launched and, and how are you guys uh, promoting it? What are you doing to uh, to market that out there? Well, the book is called Dream, Save, Do, an mm -hmm. Action Plan for Dreamers. And it's actually the second edition of the book that we wrote, which is our our action plan for, for achieving a big life-changing dream. Mm -hmm. It um, helps you rally your financial, your social, and your emotional resources to make this thing happen. And so uh, we're really excited to get it out. It's got about I don't know, 33% more content, a lot of information in there. And we're doing and case, studies and case studies, people who've used the plan themselves for various other dreams. Uh, so lots of great information in there. And we are doing everything to yeah. promote it. Mm -hmm. So we're spending a lot of time. So you spend a lot of time writing a book, I think, is about 30% of the effort, frankly, um, and maybe even less. And the majority of the work comes into promotion. It doesn't pushing. feel that way when you're doing it. I understand, it. yeah. <laughs> Believe me, the fights that we have writing together uh, don't uh, really uh, sum that up. But when you look at how to promote it, we spend a lot of time online. We have a large social fo social media following, mm -hmm. so across Facebook and Twitter and you know the, the usual suspects. We write a lot of posts, but we enlist a lot of support. 
we ask for help. So we spend the majority of our time when we're not promoting our own books, helping others promote their businesses. Right. Um, and the point in time when it comes um, where we're launching something, we reach out to that community and it's a nice symbiotic relationship where we help them and they help us. Right. And so we have we had literally hundreds of people sending out um, tweets and Facebook updates and sharing that. We also do a lot of guest posting. So we reach out to sites um, like yours, for example, um, to actually write for and share information that is associated with their readers and then draw parallels into the stories that are listed in Dream Safe Do. I think that's a key takeaway. So many people focus on building an audience and they don't focus on building a network of peers. Mm -hmm. And when you're building a business, there are lessons that you don't want to have to learn yourself. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice to have someone who's been in the trenches for a while give you a friendly piece of advice and save you time, effort, money, heartbreak, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can do the same for other people, I mean, it really is a village. And if you look at it that way, if you look at it as this symbiotic kind of thing, your business will run better and easier. You'll have better relationships and you'll feel like you're um, – part of your community yeah, right. instead of just you know asking for favors all the time yeah, or something yeah. but it does come down to that you're constantly asking and you have and this is something that's uncomfortable for most of us as humans is mm -hmm. we're uncomfortable asking for the sale we're uncomfortable asking for someone to give us a review we hope that they'll do it but we don't actually put it out there hope is not a strategy hope is not a strategy <laughs> thank you Mitt Romney we appreciate oh, no, that no 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 don't say that don't say that <laughs> so what, we, what we do is that um, so we're always asking for you know if people can help us we tell them, you know, what we would like in return. And I think that's really worked out well for us. Yeah. And there are, you know, we could write, I think we could write our own book on what we've done to promote it. But uh, mm -hmm. that's, those have been really good strategies. Yeah. Um, and so right now, for the next month, we'll do interviews like this and, and guest posts to try to spread the word. Sure. Yeah. So many great question, follow up questions that I could ask here. I'm trying to decide which one I want to ask first, but... <laughs> Uh, I think the the biggest thing is, and you guys called it out, the importance of of networking, um, and and how you are always always networking. What what are some of the strategies that you guys use to grow your network, to stay in touch with your network, to basically you know make sure that you're touching base and not doing it like you said every time you need a favor, but really just to kind of foster that community. I think that um, Betsy is the best networker I've ever met. So she is exceptional at it. Um, but And she's taught me that anytime you meet someone, you immediately um, find out and think about, is there anything I can do to help this person? Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing that goes through your head. It's not, what can they do for me? It's what can you do to help them? And it is a selfless act. It's not meant to do anything else. Well, it's a bonding experience, and it's how do our lives intersect. And when you remember that, um, you know, if you don't have a good memory, you can keep a file or, or whatever. But uh, I'm I'm pretty good at keeping that yeah. um, in my head. Mm -hmm. And and just as you see something like that, as you see a piece of news come about, you know, oh, I remember so and so is really interested in that. I should send this link to them. Mm -hmm. And so you're just constantly, it's, it's just like your friendships. It's just that it's in a business relationship, and hopefully those turn into some kind of friendship. Mm -hmm. um, we all like to do business with people that we like. Uh, so I think it's paying attention to those kinds of things and always thinking that you're part of something and not that there's this over here and I'm over here and I sometimes have to go ask for things. It's, it's all this one big thing. And I think, I mean, I don't want to get sexist here or anything, but I think women are generally better at that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a more community minded spirit. And, and so I think that's a, that's an asset that I think women in business should, should definitely, uh, hone in on and, and try to expand. Right, you know, but as far as practical steps, you know, can you provide a couple of practical steps um, that people, well, you use? I immediately, after I meet someone, I immediately connect with them via email, via Facebook, via Google+, Plus, whatever it is they're using, I want to know how to connect with them. I don't want to try to remember three weeks, three months later, oh yeah, I remember that person, blah, 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 or go find them on their website. Uh, so I try to immediately connect, and then I also try to check out what's going on on their website. What are they doing? What have they done recently that, that I might be able to help them with or that I might be able to connect them to another person mm -hmm. um, for a media interview, for, for whatever that might help them. And when you do those things right after you meet someone, it kind of cements them in your brain. Like, oh, that person is associated with that. So now when I see things related to that, I will always think of that person. Sure. So it's kind of a memory trick. Definitely. And you mentioned that your network has been an asset as far as telling you or giving you insight into 
uh, lessons learned, you know, so that you don't make the same mistakes. So you right. go out and find people who are in the trenches who have done it before. I'm wondering what are some of the specific uh, things that that they've told you to do or not do in in uh, launching this Dream Save Do book that you guys just came out with. Oh gosh, um, so we we were really lucky to. Um, can I can I name drop? Can yeah. I name drop? Okay, I'm gonna name drop right now. <laughs> we were uh, invited last week to do a review with Guy Kawasaki, and so he awesome. reviewed our book um, and gave us some feedback and ideas. And so it's you know things things that you just don't think about as an author. So your cover design and how to improve right. that. Um, ways to improve um, getting your word out and the message and words to use and the importance of brevity. Mm -hmm. um, as yeah. you can tell, we're not good with brevity when it comes to the spoken word, <laughs> but when it comes to the written word, it's, it's very important. So mm -hmm. when you meet someone who has sold a lot more than you have, who's launched more products than you have, who has a bigger email list than you have, all of those things pay attention. And that's the other piece of advice we've been given um, early, early, early on. What do you mean you don't have an email list? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you haven't started growing your email list right now, you're a day late. Start now. <laughs> yeah, great advice. And um, as far so make sure that you start early on, on doing the email list. Um, as far as uh, building products or writing books, fig figuring out topics. So you mentioned that your audience, you know, you, they were following you for a number of, of years and then they came to you and said, we want a book or we want something else. How do you go about figuring out what it is that your audience wants to, to buy from you? Well, first of all, they're usually not that specific. Yeah. Okay. Um, they don't I say wish they want, would. I yeah. wish they, that would be great if they were. They're usually not. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of read between the lines, but they, they'll, you have to listen to the kind of comments you're getting, the kind of questions you're getting, and even the questions you get from the people you meet in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. When you start hearing the same things over and over again, you start thinking, oh, okay, that's a need. That's something I know that people are coming to me for, and I can provide them information in some kind of format whether it's a course or a, a seminar or a book or, right. or whatever is your forte. Um, and I, at that, that's when you create what it is you're, you're looking for. So you're always listening for that, and you're always listening for the exact words that they use. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to change that up. You don't want to uh, use biz speak or, or yeah. lingo or any of that. You want to use the words that your audience is asking. And you want to deliver a product that fits with how they consume information. So, you know, our audience, we, we have a very good sense of exactly how old they are, what sex they are, what their uh, corporate history is, because we interact with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so we have a sense of them, and we know that they enjoy reading. So delivering a book is a great solution. Um, you know, delivering a, an online video course um, for them with a lot of um, excitement um, and a lot of marketing speak wouldn't have worked. No. Sure. So we knew that they enjoyed reading and we knew that this was the right so, uh, direction. And we've learned things since then. We know that they would rather have a printed book than an electronic book. So we've, we've launched all our books in print now. Right. Um, those mm -hmm. are all lessons that we've learned along the way. But we got to know our customers and we delivered products focused on them, not what can make us the most money yeah. and then let's go build that. Um, because that would have been um, a real mess because we had other ideas that we wanted to do um, and right. would not have fit within our market. Right. So you definitely have to pay attention to what you're trying to say, how you're trying to say it, and what people will actually buy. Because just because people say they want it doesn't necessarily mean they'll buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one last piece because it's really important. You have to do research to understand what else is out there. What are people mm -hmm. buying and what's interesting to them and why is it interesting? And then uh, on the flip side, what's the gap that is created um, between that product and what you can deliver? We write very well for an audience that's over, you know, over 35, over right. 40, who have had careers, who understand the importance of, step, of uh, and the fear associated with stepping out. Mm -hmm. right. So that's what we write about. And we, you know, we're experts in it, you know, because we've done it. So it makes it easy for us to write in that space. And we know that most of the products in that space weren't of weren't as action oriented as our book. So that's where we came from and that's how we approached it. Right. Wow. It, it is important to know, I, you talked before about people who've gone traveling and, and, and gathered up this big audience. You have to have your specific uh, travel niche so that you continue to attract an audience because just a mm -hmm. general travel blog, um, you know, there are lots of those out there. Yeah. yeah. Niche is critical and, uh, and yeah. uh, 
Corbett Barr, who we talked about before the interview with Think Traffic, talks about the USP, the unique selling proposition, and what yep. is what is it that sets you apart from the crowd, right? Right. Correct. Yeah. You, I was wondering if we could peel it back one layer further, and you talked about the importance of gathering feedback, of uh, going out there and, and figuring out what else is in the market. What are some mm-hmm. of the tools, some of the strategies that you use to do that? Well, uh, honestly, I start usually with um, keyword tools. So Google is a gr- has okay. a great keyword tool, and I use it to go out and search for a bunch of um, words that I think people would look for or we would want them to look for on our website. Mm-hmm. Then we go off and put them into search engines and figure out what the other associated um, phrases would be, and then go on to Amazon and search for books that use those key phrases. Right. So now we're into a very specific niche of books that are going to solve the problems for the keywords we want to show up for, mm-hmm. and then go. we'll go and actually buy some of those books and start reading them and understanding them to see what it is. And see, do we have something else to say that they're not saying? Do we have an right. angle that they don't have? So it's you don't want to duplicate content. Right. And so that's one. And the second is, is that we've done surveys with our audience. Mm-hmm. So we have a large enough audience where we can reach out to them and say, hey, you know, Tell us your biggest problems. And writing survey questions is a an art, and you know, but in a much longer conversation. <laughs> yes. But we want to know exactly what type of in, what type of books are they reading? What did they not solve for them? Okay. What problems are still outstanding as they go for their dreams? And then what dreams are they going for? This is what we looked at, and we really honed in on it. Mm-hmm. And I think those those tools helped us significantly. Yes, definitely. And and in the in the case of the second edition of our book, you know, why re- why we release a book? Well, you know, we we asked people, you know, what did you think of the first book? How did it help you? How did it not help you? What were you looking for that wasn't in there? And so the second edition has all those things in there. It addresses all those questions. Yeah. So we're continually even after we make a product, we continue to do the research. Yeah, you're it. always researching. You're always trying to glean more mm-hmm. insights into how you can help. And it's um, it's always better if you can take a product that you already have and improve it yeah. um, versus trying to create a new brand. I mean, our our audience knows dreams they do, um, you know, and so and they know getting rid of it. So they have a good sense for it. So being able to expand the products into that is, works. Right. Excellent. Well, so it's basically you start with the keyword research. You go on Amazon. You figure out where is the gap in the market, and then you go yep. to your existing audience, your existing market, and you say which which of these would fit well with them that they're looking for, right? Correct. Right. And then yeah. you and you have to hone into and this is where a little bit of the work uh, that the hard work comes in because you have to extrapolate out what they're saying. And you know, one of the things that we found as a gap was the idea of everything is really in, there's a lot of inspiration out there, mm-hmm. but there's not a lot of action. You know, this idea of actually creating a plan to do this, to mm-hmm. follow your dream. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was one of the areas that we found through all of the research. Um, and that's made it easier for us to write. Well, and I think you also have to see how that plays with your own skills and your own um, intentions because we are very action-oriented people. I mean, we decide to travel around the world. The next day we start the website. We set the deadline. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just our MO. So it makes sense for us to write a book that is just like that. And if we right. can find you know, those gaps and we can address those with action like we live, mm-hmm. it, it's really a perfect fit. It's like a, and I'm going to get all nerdy on you here. Settle down, honey. Uh, it's like a Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever used that phrase before. I'm so excited. <laughs> but they're interested in what you do. And so that little overlap there, that's the sweet spot. Yeah. And that's what we look for. Yeah, I just said Venn diagram. I, well, I believe me. I'm excited just to be over. <laughs> God, this I I could literally stay on here and ask you guys questions for another hour, but uh, I want to respect your time. I I want to kind of tie it into like maybe one parting piece of advice for someone who is looking to to start their career in travel or looking to start their their career online. What can they do concrete steps today to get started with that? Well, I think they have to take action and define exactly what the, what problem they can solve. And mm-hmm. so that comes into determining what skills they have. I think you need to look and determine, you know, are you good at computers? Are you good at um, understanding and helping other people plan their travels? Are you good at writing? What are all your skills? And list them out. And to not you don't even have to worry if you like it or not. We like mind mapping tools. So if you can map out all mm-hmm. your skills into a single place and start there. 
One other thing that I would recommend, and this was key for me, and that's practicing what it is that you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say practice, practice saying it out loud to yourself. Do it on video. Look at how you're saying what it is that you want to do because you're, you're sending signals when you say it that are outside of you know, what you're, you're speaking. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of times, especially for women, we try to, oh, well, you know, it's just this little thing I've started or it's this little whatever. You need to learn to be more bold and more confident about what you have to offer because if you're kind of mealy mouse about it, why is anyone going to buy it? Mm -hmm. So practice saying it over and over and over again until you are so comfortable with it. Not that it's a speech that you've memorized, but that you just know it, you feel it. And when it comes out of your mouth, it's genuine and it's attractive to other people. Mm -hmm. And use that information and spread it. So tell as many people as possible what you're doing. And do not forget the second part. Ask for their support and their help. Sure. Right. I mean, make sure that they know exactly what you're doing and there is no ifs, ands, or buts about what your direction is, both your dream and how you're going to make money, and say, and I need your help doing X, Y, and Z. I need yep. your help telling other people. I need your help um, learning and meeting people that can help me be a better writer. I need you to read my book and tell me back. Everyone, people will want to help you when you find the mm -hmm. right people. Yeah. Make sure you give them something to do. Because mm -hmm. if you just say, oh, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. Right. Um, they won't ever, you're putting too much emphasis or too much um, impetus on them to do the work. Well, you strike while the iron's hot. Anytime someone says, what can I do to help you? Or let me know if there's anything I can do. You should never be at a loss at that conversation. Yeah, you correct. should always have something that person can do and ask them right then because they've just said they'll help you. Mm -hmm. They're going to forget later. They're going to forget. Yeah. I love that. I love strike that. while the iron's hot. The iron's hot. Yes. <laughs> it's important in business and in life. Uh, well, yeah. great. What's, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? What's the best way to, to follow your travels? Well, you can always find us at our website, and that's marriedwithluggage.com. Okay. Um, we also have a really active Facebook page with a lot of crazy, interesting people. <laughs> and you can also find us on Google+. Plus. I'm Betsy Talbot. You're I'm Warren, Warren Talbot. Talbot. Yeah, we've made it really easy. All our, We share all our contact information there. And um, for a specific plan to make your dream possible, um, you know, grab a copy of Dream, Save, Do, an action plan for dreamers. Yeah, you can buy it at Amazon, iTunes. Um, and Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Well, we'll make sure to include all those links in the show notes. And thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Really appreciate it. And definitely keep in touch. Absolutely. We'll do. Absolutely. Thanks, Brad. thanks, Brad. Take care. Before you go, please take 30 seconds to share this video with family and friends. It's as easy as clicking one of the share buttons below. Finally, are you interested in seeing us interview an entrepreneur, travel professional, or someone else you think would make for a great interview? Leave a comment below and suggest an interview. Or simply leave a comment telling us how we're doing. It.